Here I have two copies of the same cube. I mean, all cubes are the same, but these are also exactly the same size, which is quite nice. And I am going to cut uh, seven edges on each of them. So I'm gonna, basically I'm uncutting the tape that I stuck on a moment ago. There's that one. And there's that one. So the same shape, the cube, can be uh, folded out into two different nets. And I did a previous video all about this. There are 11 different nets that fold into the same cube. In that video, we took it in a four dimensional direction next. However, we didn't stop to think if a single shape can have multiple nets, can an individual net fold up into multiple shapes. Like, could you fold the same net up different ways and get different shapes? And whenever you mention this to a mathematician, they're always like, no, that can't be done. Wham! It can! There it is. This net, same net, two shapes. Forget nets of a cube. This is where it's at. So these are two identical nets. You can see I can line one up perfectly on top of the other one. They are precisely the same shape. They're also based on a square grid and uh, I'm gonna fold them up. But importantly, I'm gonna fold them on slightly different lines and we'll see. Well, obviously we're gonna get the same shape twice. Let's do it. Okay, here we go. Okay, and uh, there it is. So it turns out uh, this net folds up into a one by one by five cuboid. Well, I may as well do the second one just to, just to double check that. And there it is. Isn't that amazing? So the same net gives two different uh, cuboids. I'm gonna call these generalized version of a cube. There are lots of different cuboids. We have a one by one by five cuboid. We have a one by two by three cuboid. And exactly the same net, if you fold it in different places, gives you different cuboids. I was recently at the Mass Jam conference and I mentioned this idea to a few people and they're all like, no. Like it, it feels so wrong that the same net can give more than one shape depending on when you fold it, but yet it does work. And how could we have seen this coming? Well, it turns out by reading a book. This is Geometric Folding Algorithms by Domain and O'Rourke. Yes, Eric Domain. Um, who's done a lot of amazing bits of mathematics, uh, including writing this incredible book. And on page 425, you can see the picture of that net and how it folds into the two different shapes. And actually, they give more than one example of uh, how this can work. They've also got a one by one by eight and a five by two by one. And this book came out in 2007. In the text, they uh, mentioned that these were found by a group at the University of Waterloo. And the footnote has that uh, from September 1999. So there you are. Uh, if you look it up, you can see that this idea of the same net giving more than one shape has been with us for pretty much a quarter of a century. That's not right. Can someone check 99's a quarter century ago? Uh, meanwhile, should we have seen this coming? Let's say we didn't know these existed, but we wanted to see if such a net was possible. Well, by definition, I guess, the two shapes that the same net can fold into must have the same surface area because we're not letting the nets kind of overlap or anything like that. And yeah, this has the same surface area as this. So your starting point would be, are there two cuboids with the same surface area? And that's easy enough, you just search varying the three directions. You've got how high it is this way, how high it is that way, and how high it is this way. And then you add up all the squares and you get the surface area. And very pleasingly, if you wanted to represent that data, you would put it on a 3D plot. However, the 3D plot is itself of the cuboid. So every number, that's the surface area of one possible cuboid, is at the corner of where that cuboid ends starting at the origin. So nice. Now you don't want to look at ones that are duplicates because obviously this is the same shape as this is the same shape as this. You want to have distinct ones and this is the smallest pair. These both have an area of 22 and 22 is the smallest integer 
that there are two different cuboids with that area. So this is the starting point. And um, how many nets could we possibly have to check? A lot. There are so many nets, oh my goodness. And a lot of them work. So this one was found in 1999. In 2008, someone went through and checked all of the nets that are made up of 22 squares to see which of them fold into both of these shapes. And there are 2,263 such distinct nets. They're all on our website. Um, I recommend checking it out. The rules are the nets are allowed to touch in a corner, but they can't touch along an edge. So when you fold them up, you never have to make like different cuts to get different shapes. As long as the corners aren't considered attaching, you, you've got 2,263 of these options. Absolutely incredible. Also in 2008, the Japanese mathematician Ruhai Uhara, who found those 2,263 nets, also published this incredible paper. And in it, they show not only did they find those over 2,000 nets that fold into these two specific cuboids, but if you're just looking at grid nets that fold into more than one distinct cuboid, there are infinitely many. All right, here is the net from the paper. So I'm gonna pop those out of the way for a second. And uh, you can see, same, same net twice, there it is. But fantastically, uh, not only does this fold into two different cuboids, but you can extend it as far as you want. This little sticky out bit at the top is always one wide, but then this bit here is not always two. This is actually one plus K and I've just made the k equals one case, so that is two, but k could be a bigger number, and this will be wider, this will be wider, this will be wider, the whole thing just kind of stretches out, and because there are infinitely many possible values of k, you've now got infinitely many nets, and they all fold up into one of two different boxes. Fun side fact that gets mathematicians so excited. These shapes tile the plane, so they can repeat to completely cover a 2D surface. They lock in like that, uh, and then that carries on in each direction. And then these, uh, they wrap around, I think they lock in there. Yeah, that's right. Because now you've got this bit here to fill and that's filled when you put that one there like that. So there you are, they tile the plane. Let's put them together. All right, here we go. Okay, I, before I've stuck them together this time, I thought I'd just fold them and show you. It's a little bit more intuitive this way. You can see this version, if you fold it this way, it becomes this really, really long tube. And then you've got the caps on the end that just kind of seal it up. And as you increase K, you're stretching these out. And so the tube just gets longer and longer and longer and longer. Whereas if you fold it the other way around, this is kind of wrapping it up. So instead of rolling it down this way, you're rolling it the other way. K is actually uh, this side. Oh, actually, it's this one here. So that would fold off. That caps the top, that caps the bottom. Those don't change. This length here is K. So this one's always two. This one's always one. And then this one here, K, this cuboid just kind of expands out this way. But for completeness, I will tape them together now. There they are. This one is always one by one by six K plus two. The K equals one is the smallest case that works and so that's why it's eight units tall and exactly the same surface area. But uh, this one's always one by, actually I got this wrong before, didn't I? It's always one by five and then this is two K, which is why it's two when K equals one. And this actually gets longer and longer this way. Like it kind of stretches out that way, whereas this one gets taller that way, always the same surface area. From thinking that it's not possible to realizing there are infinitely many nets that fold into two different cuboids. Incredible. Now I first came across these in a tweet from 2017 that had an animation. Very nice. It was retweeted a couple of weeks ago uh, by a math author I know, Vincent, uh, who also expressed their thought that they didn't think it was possible to have these convex solutions. Classic, no one thinks it can be done. Infinitely many mathematicians. Mathematicians versus maths in this case. Uh, I, thought, I thought this would be a great video and, and that's it. I mean, I guess that's kind of, the, that's the end of the video. The only other, don't look at the time code. The only other thing I could do 
would be to go through every single one of those 2,263 nets um, and find the one that looks the most like a Christmas tree. There it is. So the Stand Up Mass Christmas card for 2022. I found, look at that, that's pretty Christmas tree -y. Come on. That folds into two different nets. It will fold into this and it will fold into this. However, on that website, they don't actually show you how they fold. You gotta work it out yourself. And so if you support me on Patreon, you get emailed one of these. Everyone gets emailed one, so then you've got to print it out yourself. If you support me at a statistically significant level, literally or higher, I will post you a physical one of these. On the inside it says, I hope your holidays are net fun. Good joke. And, uh, and then I, I write like, you know, thanks for everything in your name and I sign it and all that jazz. And then what I want you to do is to cut out the Christmas tree from the front of this and see if you can work out how to fold it into these two different ones. Uh, send me, if Twitter still exists, tweet it at me. Maybe I'll be on Instagram by then, who knows? Um, so yeah, there you are. And by the way, you've got until very early December. If you're at the correct level on Patreon, you're guaranteed to get one of these in the post. So uh, do check it out. And that's it. That's the end of the video. Uh, thank you so much for watching. All right. And that's it. Good job, everybody. Another fantastic video. Of course, we didn't discuss the possibility of a net that folds into three different shapes, but that is absolutely not possible. Wham! You can have the same net that folds into three different cuboids in more than one way. This is actually the first one that was discovered in 2011 in this uh, fantastic paper. And this one technically kind of works, but it's very much, let's say, thinking outside the cuboid. Because this, as you may have noticed, is actually not that much bigger than the previous ones we were looking at, because this is actually one of the 2,263 nets that fold into these two shapes. And we'll do that in a second. So once again, this one will fold into that shape. This one will fold into that shape. But you're like, hang on, what's the third one? We know there's not another cuboid that has an area of 22. Or is there? Yeah, I'll get to that one in a minute. First up, my friend Lisa Matha very kindly cut all of these out using one of those automatic kind of plotter machines with a scalpel in it. And she did the scoring and everything. Amazing. But when I sent her these files, I've just realized I swapped these two around. So actually, the purple one is this shape. So if I put, I can put that in there. And you can see I've uh, folded all the lines. There it is. That wraps uh, perfectly around there. So that one there. Uh, folds up into the one by two by three uh, cuboid. Yes, the colors are the, the wrong way around. And then uh, this one here is the one that was purple last time. So that wraps around uh, like that. And then there we go. Look at that. A little more, a bit of a crazy way of folding around. Uh, but there you are. I'm going to take some time by not trying to tape those together. The remaining one, though, is this one. You think, well, what is that going to fold into? So. Well, let's just do it, let's follow the folds. That one goes there, that one goes there, that one, oh, hang on, that goes there like that. And there's like a little half flap there on the end that folds over there. And then that folds like that, that folds like that, like that, and like that, and there it is. So it folds into, well, it's flat. It folds into a one by 11 by zero cuboid. Such a mathematician solution to a problem. This is the degenerate case where one of the thicknesses of the cuboid is zero. So technically, yeah, I mean, it's a double covered rectangle. It's got the same surface area. It's technically a cuboid. Um, it just has zero length in one of the directions. And so that was the first attempt to get the same net folding into three different shapes. But rightfully, you're allowed to be a bit upset at this. The year is 2015 and this paper drops. Look at that. This is common developments. So uh, the word development is used as a synonym for net because the word net already has too many synonyms, I think, and it doesn't translate well, I believe. So anyway, this means common nets of three incongruent, so different boxes of area 30. Yeah, someone did it. They found uh, three boxes 
that can all be folded from the same net. So here I've got three copies of exactly the same net. However, they're still doing something a little bit sneaky. I'll fold the first two, which are a bit more normal, and then we'll have a look at the third. There it is, the first one. It's a one by three by three cuboid. So it's got an area of nine on the front, nine on the back, and then four lots of three. So that's 12 and 18, 30. Area of 30. One cuboid down, two to go. We'll do the, this one next. And there it is, box number two. This time it's one, two, three, four five, six, seven. One by one by seven. So that means there's four times seven, there's 28 around the edges, plus one there, plus one there. 30, so now we've got two cuboids from the same net, both with an area of 30. We've drawn equal to our previous one that they both had an area of 22. But what about this next one? Well, this also folds up into a cuboid, but it does bend the rules in so much as it bends where there's no rules, it actually folds, not in orthogonal folds to the grid that this is cut out of, but the folds are on jaunty angles. So this one here folds up like, like that. How displeasing is that? All right, so I'm gonna fold all these ridiculous angled folds and we'll see what we get. Okay, there's the folding done. So all the folds are at right angles to all the other folds. They're just not at right angles to the original grid of 33 squares. I don't like this at all. Let's tape it together. Right. Oh, I'm not happy about it, but there it is. I mean, and that's definitely a cuboid. I mean, it's an actual cube. You don't get more oidy than an actual cube and everything is at right angles it's just not relative to the original grid and this length now this new length we've got that is the square root of five compared to the unit length of the grid that the net was cut out of it's just so ridiculous and because that's root five long and this is a cube each of the faces has an area of five and there are six of them area of 30 so it works there you are area of 30 area of 30 area of 30, they're all cuboids, and they were all folded from exactly the same grid. I mean, you cannot argue, people are gonna argue with that. So if this paper from 2015 is making you sad, don't worry, I skipped over one. From 2013 was this paper, and it also found a net that gives you three different cuboids. And none of this folding on weird angles, it follows all the rules. It's got a st straight up square grid net, fold it three different ways along the straight angles, and you get three different cuboids. The problem is, it's absolutely freaking massive. Now, they do the same trick as before, where they show there's an infinite family. So we now know there are infinitely many nets that are grids and fold on the grid lines and become three different cuboids because of the family. The issue is the smallest one is this one. And it has an area of 532. It's just ridiculously big. And when Lisa very kindly made all of these other ones for me, I was like, ah, oh, there is one more, but it's just stupidly big. I don't think we should try, and we did. So this literally arrived in the post from Lisa this morning, right before we started filming. I'm gonna pop it open, and against my better judgment, we're gonna build three boxes with an area of 532. Here we go. Oh my goodness. No, oh, okay, so, I mean, it's very well packed. Oh no. Okay, sorry, everything else is going off the... These will come back later, don't worry. I'm just gonna very gently put them down here. All right, here we go. Okay, there's the first one. Look at it. Oh, no. it's so big. Why did I think this was a good idea? Oh, 
is gonna, oh, they zip it together. Oh, look at that. That's all gonna zipper like that. Lovely. Oh, okay. Yep, 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 yep. Let's get that crease done first. And that, okay, that all goes there, that falls around there, that folds in there. Okay, I mean that's that's far from perfect. Definitely the hardest one to put together, and you can literally see a lot of this, a lot of the actual seams. Uh, but there it is. That's that's the shape. So that is now the squares are a lot smaller this time. So that's two by one, two, three, four, two by four by a lot. So that must be the two by four by forty three. So. On the upside, that's that's the longest. Is that even all? It's just all in the shot. All right, so that's the longest one. I'm gonna put that like there. And then let's reveal the next two, which are a lot, a lot more boxy. So they won't be quite, I mean, obviously the net's the same size. That's the whole point. So there's another, there it is, identical net. But this time the fold should make it more of a box. Let's find out. Ta-da! That was ridiculously good fun! Uh, it was annoying, but I'm so glad I did it. You know what? I don't know if the people who wrote the paper would have ever bothered actually making these, so I very easily could be the first human who ever folded the same net into three distinct shapes only with orthogonal folds. I mean, conceivably someone else might have done it, the authors working on the paper or someone who read it since then, but that was a lot of faff. And if I know mathematicians, they would not have bothered actually trying to do that. But anyway, we can now see we got all three. This one here, that one is the 7x8x14. We've now got the 2x13x16, more of a cereal box size, and our original ridiculous 2x4x43. And so this is currently humankind's best effort at the same net that folds into three different cuboids, orthogonal folds only. And I think that's ridiculous. We can do so much better. I mean, look at the case for two. It's tiny. An area of 22. But we need an area of 532 for the smallest one we've found. Now, technically, there could be a solution with an area of 46. That would give you a 1 by 1 by 11. It would give you a 1 by 2 by 7 and a 1 by 3 by 5. However, no one has found one. They did say at the end of, this is the 2015 paper now, right at the end they point out that, uh, this is the paper where they did the, the silly one here, where they found the one with 30, which is the case with the non-orthogonal fold. Still very clever, but not what we're after. And at the end, in their concluding remarks, uh, they say here, we conjecture that there exists an orthogonal polygon of 46 unit squares that admits to fold these three boxes, referring to the, the, the smallest possible ones. However, as of now, this is the limit of humankind's understanding. No one's found one with 46 squares that fold into three different cuboids. No one's managed to prove it doesn't exist. So if you're bored, give it a go. Although I, it's probably gonna need a lot more computing power than we have at the moment. But who knows? People who watch my videos have written more ridiculous code than that in the past. And the other thing we don't know is if there's a net that folds into four different cuboids or five different cuboids. Or is, is there a limit even? So from the same concluding remarks, they point out that if from there, let me get this here, from there, uh, we remind that theorem two says that we have no upper bound by the constraint of the surface areas. So in theory, you could pick an arbitrary large number and there's one net that folds into that many different cuboids. Or they go on to say, 
but it is hard to imagine that one polyomino, which just means a bunch of squares stuck together, a net, can fold into, say, 10,000 different boxes. But just because it's hard to imagine, doesn't mean it doesn't exist. So there you are, that's what we don't know. We don't know if there's a better way to do three than this, and we don't know if four or five or however many above that work. If you want to give it a go, please do. Uh, let me know if you have any success. The one thing we do know, though, as a species, is that you've only got until early December to make sure you're signed up to get the Stand Up Mass Patreon Christmas card. So I say early December. I leave it as late as I can. Make sure you're supporting me, statistically significant or higher, if you want the physical card. Thank you so much for your support. It not only means I can justify an entire day folding uh, these things, but I can get friends uh, like Lisa involved uh, to, use, to use their skills and resources to make possibly the first ever set of identical nets that fold into three different cuboids. Thank you for your support. Have a wonderful festive season.